How everybody doing? Good, everybody. That was a powerful, uh, powerful emotions this morning. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Powerful. Had me turn up, you know. So, uh, good. we're going to do a little review of last week. Uh, we kind of uh, went over, not kind of, we did go over understanding the Ruach, the Spirit. So, uh, we're just going to recap the four points that we went over. So, this way, we have an understanding. Because it's essential that we understand the Ruach at this time. So, uh, let's go. So, on the review, on the review, uh, Everybody should have last week's four points, uh-huh. and this was the four points in this week. What did we do? Three. It was all. I don't think it was four. It was about four. four. The four. It's just four points. About three or four. You know, four. Mean, just know yeah. That's what we're gonna focus on. Yeah, I got them. No, no, that's cool. I'm in the field there. All right, so, so the first point was, uh, who? Well, what did you know about the ruach? Hakodesh, the Holy Spirit, and whose spirit is it? It's just, you know, review. So, anybody can answer. Spirit of understanding. Spirit of understanding? Okay. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Spirit of obedience. Spirit of obedience. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's how we get power. Hallelujah. Fear and evil. Who? Fear and evil. Hallelujah. So, y'all all right. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 3, 17. And everybody say, hallelujah, we're here. So it says, now Yahuwah is the Ruach, or in the KJV, it says, is that Ruach. It says, and where the Ruach of Yahuwah is, there is freedom. So that's the answer. That's the answer to <coughs> who spirit is it? Yahuwah is that Ruach. So, so somebody, like I said, somebody come to you and say, hey, you know, who, who, who is the Holy Spirit? Like, who is the Ruach? Yeah, spirit of Yah. So let's go. Now, what uh, does spirit mean? And this is, you know, breath. Breath. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all get me. Y'all get me. Okay. So um, when uh, so the Hebrew nomads were very familiar with the wind patterns, as they would follow a prescribed path, indicated the coming. In, uh, the coming season from this word comes the idea of breath as it is the wind of a man which as fo- uh, also follows a prescribed path from an hell and an ex- hell, uh, to be given a fresh wind uh, as carried on the wind and to be wide with space so y'all you know wind and breath smell touch understand. so now we're going to uh, talk about the administrations uh, of the Ruach. So this covers the second point. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, what is it, uh, the characteristics? Yeah, what's, okay. how do you walk? In yeah, how do you walk in the Ruach? How do you walk? When you're looking at somebody, how do you identify if they're walking in the Ruach? Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. it's, it's essential that we know how to know, because somebody, there's many spirits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Anybody can be walking in any spirit. You think it's the Ruach. It's not. So, um, before we go to 1 Corinthians, what's some of the, a uh, couple of the uh, administrations that anybody knows? Words of wisdom. Words of wisdom. Uh, Prophecy. Miracles, healing. Healing. Faith. Discernment. Peace. Tongues and interpretation of tongues. Yeah. So, let's go to it. <clears throat> what everybody there say hallelujah. 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 Okay. 
uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting in verses 4. It says, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Ruach. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Yehudah. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same Elohim, which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the, of the Ruach is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given the spirit of the spirit <laughs> by the spirit, the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit. So these these are two different administrations, but it's the same, same spirit, the same as one ruach. Mm -hmm. To another, faith by the oh my God. by the same spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit. To another, to another, the working of miracles. To another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits. Yes, that's We're gonna touch on that today. That's to another di uh, diverse kinds of tongues, and to another, to the inter. Hold on. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the same spirit, dividing to every man <coughs> severally as he will. Yeah. So it's the same Ruach give it up. Yeah. So summing it up in practical terms, some of it is everybody don't get to be the more. Mm -hmm. Some people are gonna be healers and some people gonna be teachers. Some are gonna interpret tongues. But we all can't be one body and all we got is an eye, because everybody wanna be an eye. Mm -hmm. Or one mouth, because everybody wants <coughs> to be a mouth, but now we got no feet to get us nowhere. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So every like the Ak was saying, we gotta work in our gift then. To operate as the body, mm -hmm. yeah. Mashiach embodied all these things, yeah. and now you uh, you may have heard we are the body of Mashiach. Mm -hmm. But if everybody just want to be the right hand, ain't nothing getting done. <coughs> it's kind of to get us one. Hallelujah. It's kind of moving to that when you see that. So that's why everybody can't have every administration within mm -hmm. the body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, and let's go. Uh, to uh, First Samuel. First Samuel chapter ten, verse six. Okay. So everybody there? Okay. So it says, starting at uh, 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 6. Oh, and just to give a backdrop on this chapter, uh, this is Samuel anointing uh, Shaul to be king. So just to let y'all know that. After what we just read, the gifts. And the Ruach of Yahuwah will come upon you, and you shall prophesy with, with them, and shall be turned into <coughs> another man. And let it be. When these signs are come unto you, that you do as occasion serve you. For Elohim is with you. And thou shalt go down before me to Gil Gilgal, and behold, I will come down unto you to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice sacrifices of peace offerings. Seven days shall you tarry till I come to you and show you what you shall do. And it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, Elohim gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. And when they came thither, or it came, uh, to, when they came there to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met him. And the spirit of Elohim came upon him. And he prophesied among them. So y'all see right there, the spirit of Yah came upon, the prophecy came. Mm -hmm. It says, and it came to pass when all that knew him before time saw that, behold, behold he prophesied among the prophets. Then the people said, 
one to another. What is this that is come up come unto the son of Kish? Is Shaul also among the prophets? So you see right there. Uh, we go back up to verse six. Uh, it says at the bottom it says, and he shall be turned into another man. So when the Ruach is upon you, you're not gonna be the same. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's we gotta know that. The Ruach requires change within you. So you're not going to be the same. So when you see in 11, they ask him, what is this of the son of Kish? Like, what is he? he I ain't never heard him prophesy, you know. But this is how we all are coming into this way of life. The Ruach is upon us. And people don't, our people don't, people from our past don't recognize us. And it's essential that, you know that. Um, I'm going to back with With all the emergence that's taking place today. Uh, you can quench the Ruach. You can get the Ruach, he can change. We see what happened to Saul, he was changed into another man. But when the unclean spirit leaves the man, they go out to dry places and come back. Now, Saul, clean, varnished, and the end of Saul was worse than the beginning of Saul. So, 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 because we know the story of what happened. Mm -hmm. so, like, this is not the end. You can get the Ruach and you get immersed, it's the beginning. Mm -hmm. So, do not quench the Ruach. It's good though. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. 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 It's good. It's good. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we do it. Okay. Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. On Thursday, uh, like Rose said, we had we had beat Isaiah 11 over the head, so we ain't gonna read that one. These are all the scriptures you did. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. 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 I went straight to Isaiah. All right. Isaiah 61. So Isaiah chapter 61, starting in verses 1. It says, The Ruach of Elohim, of Yahuwah Elohim, is up on me because Yahuwah hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of Yahuwah and the day of vengeance of our Elohim, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, and I mean, beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaven, <laughs> that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of Yahuwah, that he might be glorified. Hallelujah. So these are actions, what is it, characteristics. When you see these, when you see somebody, uh, what is it, binding up the broken heart. That's, a, that's, a, that's one of the ways of the spirit, of the Ruach. It's one of them characteristics. Exactly. You start to see somebody proclaiming liberty to the to the captives, proclaiming freedom to the captives. This is something of the Ruach. This is a characteristic of the Ruach. So, yeah. Okay. We we'll go to the next. And then uh, the Ruach in the Tanakh, we, uh, we can jump through just a couple of them. Just go to numbers. Uh, go there. Exodus Okay. So, like I said, we went over the uh, 
the administrations and the, uh, the characteristics of the Ruach. And so when we look in the, in the Torah, we should be able to see the same attributes, the same thing. We should be able to see the same thing, but it's one Ruach. So, Especially if you the read Isaiah 11. Yeah. It's the same Ruach. So let's go to Exodus 28, verse 3. Everybody there? So it says, and you shall speak unto all uh, that are wise hearted, whom I have uh, filled with the Ruach of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments to uh, consecrate him, that he may minister uh, unto me in the priest's office. So, Mosai gave his gave him that spirit of wisdom. That's the ruach to know exactly how to put that thing together. So you know, Aaron he was he was fly, you know. So and then let's go now. Let's go to uh, Exodus thirty one. Wasn't it another ox that um? I think it was Exodus thirty one. Exodus thirty one. Yeah. Exodus thirty one. So if anybody come tell you the Ruach came in Acts chapter 2, that was it. That was the beginning of it. We know that's not, that's not true. So, uh, Exodus 31. So, <clears throat> let's read uh, Exodus 31, starting in verse 1. And it says, And Yah spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri." the son of Hur, the son uh, from, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the spirit of Elohim. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. Filled him with the spirit of Elohim. So the spirit of Elohim been here, been here. It says in wisdom uh, and in understanding and in knowledge and in, manner, in all manner of workmanship. So we see some of the attributes of uh, when we read in, uh, what was it, uh, Corinthians, First Corinthians? Mm -hmm. So, to devise cunning works, to work in gold and si in silver and in brass and in cutting of stones, to set them in carvings of timber, to work all manner of workmanship. Mm -hmm. And I, behold, I have given with uh, Aholiab, the son of Ahis Ahisimach, uh, of the tribe of Dan, and in the hearts of all that are wise hearted, I have put wisdom that they may make all that I have commanded you. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So that, like I said, we just be saying these characteristics and these uh these administrations, they already been given. You know, they already been given. Uh way back in the tour. So it's not it doesn't start in Acts chapter two. It's been here. But we see, walking in the Ruach, we see the fruits of it. We see the fruits of it. All right, we're going to read, we're gonna read uh, Numbers 11, Numbers 11, 17. All right, 11, 17, you can read 17 and then skip down 25 to 29. <coughs> Yeah, is everybody there? Hallelujah. 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 All right, we're going to Numbers. I didn't even tell it right. We're going to Numbers 11, uh, verses 17. My bad, y'all. Right. Okay. Numbers 11, verse 17. And I will come down and talk with thee there. And I will take of the spirit which is upon thee. And will put it upon them. And they shall bear the burden of the people with thee. That thou bear it not thyself alone. <coughs> and we skip down to verse 25 to verse 29. In verse 25. And Yahuwah came down in a cloud and spake unto him and took of the spirit that was upon him 
and gave it unto the seventy elders. Mm. And it came to pass that when the Spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. So I got a question. This Spirit that rested upon the seventy elders, is that the same Spirit that rested on our, uh, rested, uh, rested upon that man that was about to, that was being prophesied of in uh, Isaiah 11? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that the same Spirit that rested upon him? Mm -hmm. same. Same Ruach. Same Ruach. Verse 26. But there remain two of but there remain two of men in the camp. The name of one Eladad, and the name of the other Medad, and the spirit rested upon them. And they were of them that were written, but went not out unto the tabernacle. And they prophesied in the camp. Mm. And there ran a young man and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medad do prophesy in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men, answered and said, My master Moses, forbid them. And Moses said unto him, Envious thou for my sake? Hmm. Would Yahuwah, would Elohim that all Yahuwah's people. Yahuwah's people were prophets? And that Yahuwah will put his spirit upon them? So, two men that, I guess they were, they had their Ruach placed upon them as well. And they went out and they started to prophesy. They started to prophesy. This was one of those uh, administrations that we had just read. They prophesied. So, when you see that um, they start to prophesy, it was a bit of like, what are they doing? Why are they doing this? Why are they doing this? And uh, Joshua was like, hey, you know. And Moses was like, man, you envy for me? You envious for me? Man, I wish all of Israel was prophets. Everybody. Let's, let's, let's go on that note. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5. Okay, so go to Galatians 5 real quick. Let's go ahead and go to Galatians 5. Huh? Galatians chapter 5. This is a, it's not up there. I'm just. Oh, 25. Starting verse 25. Galatians 5, chapter 25. says uh verse 25 says if we live in the in the spirit let us walk in the spirit let us not be desirous of vain glory mm. provoking one another envying one another mm. Mm. hallelujah let's not do that yeah. that's not because what's we all got different roles right. yeah. we don't need to be uh it can't be just one person prophet can't be one person teacher can't be one person uh uh Lead praise and worship. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because that's that's a gift of the Ruach. Yeah. Everybody can't lead worship. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But that don't, you know what I'm saying? That don't mean you be envious of that. Yes, yeah. right. So let's uh so that's, that's what I was touching on on that. So let us not be envious, seeking vain glory. You said Moshe had that understanding back then. Already. Yeah. Already. They already had the Ruach on. That same Ruach. That same Ruach. So, um, somebody come up to you and ask you, I see you got the Ruach, how I get that? Man, I've been watching you, man. I've been seeing how you've been walking. Man, how do I get the Ruach? How do I know I got it? How do I obtain it? Whatever, you don't try to buy it. <laughs> 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 I think uh, I agree with what she said. But I think the step we come up that we come up before that would be submission mm -hmm. to the understanding that oh, yeah. we need to be saved. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, before you commit to the water, you got to commit to you know, I need help. Yeah. 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 And that all plays into belief, right? 
So you gotta believe in your Hoosier. Believe in the cup. Believe in that cup. Yeah. Okay. Okay, everybody everybody on the money. Believe in that sacrifice too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so after you believe, then what's the next step? Repent. Okay. Then what? Walk. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Then walk. Mm-hmm. Walk it out. And then, then you, you, you receive what? Mm-hmm. After you get you immersed, what's the gift of immersion? You are the Lord. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's go to Acts chapter 2. You go to the next slide. Oh, okay. My bad. Mm-hmm. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verses 38. Then Peter, or Kepha, said unto them, Repent. So that's what I that's, 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 said that. You got to repent. You got to turn away. You got to. So, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yahushua Hamashiach, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Ruach HaKodesh. Yeah. And that's some of that belief too, because if you don't believe, you ain't gonna get baptized or immersed in the name of Mashiach. Yep. Mm-hmm. They had immersion going on back then, but it was something new. Oh, this is that back in the uh, Torah, it was saying the salvation of Yah, mm-hmm. Yahushua. Mm-hmm. So now people with that understanding knew I'm gonna get immersed and I believe and on that name because the Torah told us it was coming. Mm-hmm. So without that belief, you're not going to do it. Yeah. It says, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as Yahuwah, our Elohim, shall call. Yeah. Okay, so. So that's how you obtain. Yeah, we going to accept. No. Okay. All right, so. So then the last point was um Let's go back real quick bro. so if y'all can y- if y'all can write down Ezekiel 36 oh yeah it, 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 or you want to go read it real quick. yeah let's go to Ezekiel 36 real fast so if anybody try to say that uh immersions uh oh that that just uh you know we ain't supposed to be immersed they didn't say nothing about yeah. that and I, okay so we can go to we just take them to Ezekiel 36 and let's see just what it sounds like Let's see what it sounds like. You know what? I don't have to get immersed to get the Ruach. I don't have to do all of that. I don't have to believe in Mashiach. Let's see what, what you get. Okay. 36. Yeah. I say, how do y'all want it there? Hallelujah. Pull this scripture out. All right. <coughs> so. Thank you, 36. It says, For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all the countries and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean. Mm. So, don't we get immersed for the remission of to be washed away? Right. So, he already He's already telling you. So let, let's keep going. Let's keep going. It says, from all your filthiness and all of your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will you shall keep my judgments as you do them. 
we've been talking all weekend about how we try to walk, we try to keep the law, the statutes and the commandments without the power of the Ruach HaKadosh in us. And when we're doing that, all we're doing is going through the motions that lead to death. Because without his empowerment, without the Ruach, giving us that new heart, circumcising it, and giving us that new spirit, we don't have the power to walk in it. All we're going to do is prove to ourselves that we can't keep the law when we're doing it outside of the power of the Ruach HaKadosh. And I always spend a lot of time talking about that. And then you see that a lot in the awakening. People trying to keep the laws and statutes and commandments and what you end up with is an outer appearance of righteousness, mm -hmm. while inside it's like filthy. It's like rags, it's like bones, yeah. dead man's bones on the inside. So it's that work of the Ruach on the inside Hallelujah. that empowers you to keep the law. And then through that, in, through that circumcision of the heart, you should start to see fruit budding that, that represent that the, the Ruach is dwelling mm -hmm. on the inside of you. Hallelujah. 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 Because it says it will cause it will cause you. Now it might it, it's gonna cause you to walk in those laws that you commandments the Ruach. So okay. because the law is what? Spiritual. 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 You can't walk in the laws. If you don't have the, the understanding of why he's telling you to do this certain thing. We'll think fringes, but what was fringes or ZZ supposed to represent? Right. Um, like, it's the spiritual we, side to it. Okay. Because yeah. we was going to put that in. Uh, the uh, So when you think back on it, too, because y'all was like saying, if you understand what's going on, you can see that that's like an immersion. Yeah. So if you think about it, before the Most High gave them Torah in Exodus 20, so it's probably Exodus 19, mm -hmm. he told Moshe, go take them and wash them. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. You're washing it means you getting that thing which is spiritual, because then the Torah was spiritual, they just didn't understand it. The spiritual portion of it. So when you look back in, in the back of, you know, in the Torah, you will see that that, that, that function of immersion was going on all through the book. Mm -hmm. yeah. wash them, the Even in Joshua, if they cross into the yeah. Yeah. told them to wash themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the work of the Black Yeah. <laughs> Because uh, I, I think even go way back to the flood. Mm -hmm. That was an immersion. Yep. And then even if you think about uh -huh. Passover, you had to go through a wall. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Like, all that's all that. Yes. You know, kind of connected. He's right. always so delivering us through water. Yeah. He's always delivering us through water. Yeah. Yeah. It was the Jordan, too, right? In Joshua. Chapter 2, or Joshua chapter 3 and 4, <laughs> we had to walk through the Jordan. Mm -hmm. Man. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. That's <laughs> So the last question is, um, so the last question, the last uh, point is, why do you need it? Somebody asked you why. So why do I need to move out? What do I need to move out for? What, you, what would you say? To keep you in the way. Huh? To keep yeah. you in the way. Keep you in the way? To be a witness unto you. You said, what am I? To live forever. To live forever. Anybody else? Amon said, um, to live an everlasting life in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I thought somebody was going to read it already. I'm sure said, somebody read it. Because right? they answered. That's a first. Yeah. <laughs> So it says, and he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but you shall receive power. After that, the Ruach uh, HaKadosh is come upon you, and you shall be uh, witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem 
in, in all Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost parts of the earth. So so you can be a witness. You can't be no witness in my shot. You ain't got the rule. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. He's gonna say something. Else. Yeah. I mean, I ain't thinking more so. They, but he probably got. I mean, this from Isaiah because uh, I don't know Isaiah chapter four or what's talking about. He's got created him for my sin. So mm-hmm. it's like that same thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Exactly. Trying to that, see that pop. And that, yeah, that. Uh, trying to see that pop. No. Take look. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm telling him let y'all get to the next lesson because this is the review. Oh, he's trying to. Okay. Right, yeah, we're going to let review. you loose in a minute. All right. So, yeah, we're going to let you loose. All right. So, uh, understand the rule. It's, it's, it's like part two, but it's really not part two. It's just a continuation. You know, so. But, so, so the, whole po- the whole point of the first part was understanding what were the four points? Um, what is the rock? and who's pretty easy? Uh, what does it look like to walk in a ruach? Uh, how do you obtain it? Characters. How do you obtain a ruach? Yeah, why? And why do you need? It? So this is all understanding Yah and, and the ruach that He sends upon us, and why we need it. How do we get it? This is all. That was all about the spirit of Yah. All about the spirit of Yah. So if you got the spirit of Yah on you, those those are the things that you will see. Those are the things that you will get. Now. The second part, we're leading into, we're leading into, uh, and also we touched on the spirit resting, Yah's spirit resting upon. What we got? John, we ain't go to. We can. We can go to if you want to. Yeah. First John. I mean, John one. Yeah, John one. John 1, uh, 19, John chapter 1, verse 19. Yeah, we can go ahead and go to that. And we can see with Mashiach, because that was, and also know that John chapter 1 was Isaiah 11 being fulfilled. John chapter 1 and Matthew 13. That was Isaiah 11 being fulfilled. Chapter one, verse nineteen. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, where was it? Oh, yes, first John. Oh, okay. First John chapter one, starting at verses nineteen. It says, and this is the record of John, or Yachanan, when the Yehudim sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him. So, yeah, so the priests were sending people saying, hey, man, who is that brother? Go ask who that brother is. It says, who are you? Who art thou? It says, and he confessed and, den- and denied not, but confessed, I am not Mashiach. And they said, they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you a prophet? And he answered, no. Then they said unto him, who art thou? Who are you? That we may know, that that we may know an answer to them that sent us. What sayest us, what sayest you of yourself? What do you say of yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of Yahuwah, as it said the, the prophet Elijah. Isaiah. 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 Okay. Okay. He, yeah, Isaiah. It says, and he said, and they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said unto him, why baptize you then if you are... If, if you be not that Christ, nor Elijah, or yeah, nor Elijah, neither that prophet. Like, why are you baptizing people then if you're not this prophet? And said, and, ya- and Yachanan answered them, saying, "I baptize with water, but there standeth one 
among you whom you know not. He it, he it is who come who coming after me is preferred before me. Whoso shoes whose whose shoe latches hey, whose shoe latches I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Ber <coughs> Beth Bara beyond Jordan, where John was baptized. So the next day, John seeth uh, Yahshua coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of Elohim, which taketh, taketh away the sin of the world. This is he whom, of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me, even though he was born after me. It says, I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest in, to Israel. Therefore, I am. Therefore, am I come baptizing with water? And Yachanan bear record, saying, "I saw the ruach descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water." The same said unto me, Upon whom you shall see the Spirit descending and remaining on him. The same is which the same is he which baptizes with the Holy Spirit. So we see he he's saying Oof. he's talking about <laughs> talking about Isaiah eleven. Like so we go when we read Isaiah eleven and we read how uh, the spirit of uh, the Most High is supposed to rest upon uh, like a dove and stuff like that. And then the other one you could just read in Matthew chapter 3 uh, yeah. verses 13. And that's him actually getting immersed and then he's seeing the spirit come down upon him. So you <laughs> see that uh, he's highlighting that rest. Yeah. yeah. Rest. Resting upon him. That's, that's what I'm supposed to read. I know. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what is rest everybody? What is rest? That tongue to us. Yeah. So basically, you just read it, him getting the vision that he's going to baptize for the Shia in the future. No, that was the actual. Yeah, that was him actually uh, about what he's doing. He saw Yahshua coming and he. He was speaking to him. Yeah. But Isaiah 11 foretold him. That was, for the, pro that was the prophecy of him. Yeah. Well, sometimes you hear it say that uh, came to fulfill the law and the prophets. When those actions are being done, then that is the fulfillment of the prophet. That's Isaiah being fulfilled there. So that's what my chapter is saying. He's not going to be fulfilled the law and the prophet. Mm -hmm. People that can see the things that was supposed to happen, it's happening. Okay. Okay. The question is basically, did John know he was going to do it, or he just. Yeah, because he knew Isaiah yeah. 11. So mm -hmm. he was like, this is what Isaiah 11 is talking about. He just didn't say, oh, because it wasn't no 11s or nothing in between, you know what I mean? So that's why it's like, this is what Isaiah is talking about. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so now we see the spirit of Yah rested upon people. So that was the part upon Mashiach. Upon my, my, yeah, upon Mashiach. But we also saw the, uh, the Ruach rested upon <coughs> people he put his Ruach upon. Okay. All right, so I know it sounds rhetorical, but why is the Ruach set apart? Participation. Participation. Why is the rock set apart? Because you're Because you're Because you're So why else is it? Because we do. Oh, because we do. It's a it's a gift. Not every not every gift is for everyone. Like if we bring a gift in here, it's most likely gonna be for one person. Mm -hmm. You know, this or this gift, this gift. It's a okay. gift if everyone can have have it. Mm -hmm. It's really important. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it one of the attributes? Um, set apart. Of Yah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It is. So, but why is his spirit? Why is the ruach set apart? Why is it called the set apart ruach? Because there are others who are like the spirit. Like it. Exactly. You come up with this Oh, because there are. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, because uh, there are other ruachs or spirits, and then the Hakodesh part or the Holy Spirit uh, is the set apart of all of the other spirits. Somebody back there say something too. I said, 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 I said
the Holy of Holies. The Holy of Holies, yep. So, that's what it is. That's the answer. That's the answer. Because it's Yah's spirit. The set apart. He is the, the uh, what'd you say, Ima? There's none like him. There's none like him. There's none like him. People come in many different spirits. Mm -hmm. The president of this country is in a spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so he's not in the Ruach. He's not in the set of spirit. Mm -hmm. So it's just asking that. So, like I said, these are questions. This is just based on questions. It's always getting asked and stuff. So this is in the, for your toolbox. So when somebody asks, boom, you know. So all right. also, we go see. Let's go to Samuel yeah. chapter 16. First Samuel chapter 16. Chapter 16. Verse 13. Okay. Okay. And as David and his men went by the way. Oh, this is second I'm sorry. You got it? Yeah, I got it already. It says, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. This is this is uh Samuel anointing uh King David. Yep, King David. This is him anointing King David. It says, And the spirit of Elohim came up on David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. But the spirit of Elohim departed from Shaul. Mm -hmm. And an evil spirit from uh, Yahuwah troubled him. Mm -hmm. Alone. Hold up. So, did we not just read earlier when Shaul had received Yah's spirit, right? right. He was prophesying. Yeah. So, when that spirit was up on now David, Yah's spirit left him. And an evil spirit from Yah troubled him. Mm -hmm. So this is why we ask, why, uh, what is set apart? Why is the Ruach set apart? Right. Because there are other spirits. Mm -hmm. All spirits are not good spirits just because it's spiritual. Yep. You hear people say, that, oh, spiritual. I'm spiritual. Yep. Right. What spirit? What'd that be? Like, <laughs> yeah. okay, you know, so that's what we got to, that's what we got to really be mindful of. Every spirit is not good. Okay, so it says, And Shaul's servant said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from Yahuwah trouble of you. Let our master now command your servants, which are before you, to seek out a man who is cunning, who is a cunning player on a harp, on an harp. And it shall come to pass when, an e when the evil spirit from Elohim is upon you, that he shall play with his, with his hand and thou shalt be well and Shaul said unto his servants provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me that's it so you know the, the he, he got played David played for him yeah. and he was healed mm -hmm. oh yeah yo oh. Second Chronicles chapter 18. Yeah, that's y'all ain't gotta go to it, but that's in verse 23. It says, And it came to pass when the evil spirit from Elohim was upon Saul that David took an harp and played with his hand. So uh Shaul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. So the spirit that was on Shaul left Shaul when the man who had the spirit of Yah rested upon him, that set apart spirit mm -hmm. rested upon him. That's the one who had the spirit rested upon him, David. When he played with the harp, that evil spirit had to go. Before David came, the spirit didn't have no reason to go nowhere. That's just, I'm just throwing that out there. So they didn't burn no sage. Nah, no, they didn't burn no sage. They didn't burn nothing. <laughs> Ain't burn no kind of say. 
guys can see how the spirit left there with like this is just a question. Can the like the set of parts spirit be set on many people at one well, time? He, he didn't it didn't leave David. Not David. Oh sorry. Okay. Can like like I'm asking can the spirit set of our spirit be set on many people at a time or just like oh, yeah. one Okay. Well that's in numbers, uh we didn't go to it, but that was in uh numbers. 21, I believe. The 70 yeah, the 70 elders. Yep, exactly. That's it. We were supposed to read it, but we did. It was when uh, Moshe was dealing with all the people at once. And so Yah took that spirit that was on Moses and placed it on the 70 elders. I'm just trying to get a clarification, basically. Yeah. So, yeah, you, yeah, that, yeah, you can. It can be on multiple people at once. Mm -hmm. So, Second Chronicles. And the question, remember, the question was. Uh, why is the Ruach set apart? So we gotta stay with that with that question with these next two verses. So, man, I'm way back here. So yeah, Second Chronicles uh, chapter eighteen, verse seventeen. Is everybody there? Hallelujah. Okay. It says, and the king of Israel said unto uh, Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you that he would not prophesy good unto me, but evil? And uh, he said, therefore, hear the word of Yah. I saw Yah sitting upon his throne and all the host of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. Mm. And Yah said, who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel? Mm. And he may go up, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead. And he and one spake saying after this manner. And another saying after that man. So what is they, what are they discussing? What is this uh council, this is conference about that's in the heavens? What are they what are they discussing right now? What is y'all discussing with these other spirits? Who going to entice Ahab? Okay. Who going to entice Ahab? Okay. okay. And y'all said, oh, okay, oh, 20. And there came out a spirit stood before Yah and said, I will entice him. And Yah said, uh, wherewith? And he said, I will go out and, and, and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And Yah said, you shall entice him and you shall also prevail. And go out and do even so. So he got permission going to be yeah, right. a false spirit in the mouth of the prophets mm -hmm. wow. from the most high mm -hmm. from the set apart spirit and he even said you're going to prevail yeah. gonna it's going to happen, gonna happen. Gonna happen. somebody going to fall for it because yeah, evil is the seven of evil mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. man <coughs> what did it say uh, Isaiah it said I made mm -hmm. I made it also says there is a Malachim appointed for the day of evil an mm -hmm. evil angel appointed for the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now we see now it's a lying spirit out here, and this is also talking about uh, are these those same? Um, I I was just wondering. Everybody knew that those prophets weren't weren't prophets of the Most High. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's a point of clarification okay. because when Jehoshaphat asked them. The king, the king of Israel wanted a war, and Jehoshaphat asked them after he brought like 400 false prophets. He says, "Is there not a prophet of the Most High okay. that we can ask?" And then he said, yeah. "The king of Israel said, well, yeah, there is, but he don't never say nothing good about it.'" <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. what was his name again? Micaiah. And then when they approached Micaiah, Micaiah said, "You know, if it wasn't for Jehoshaphat being here, because he's a man of God, he said I wouldn't even waste my time talking to you." And so then that's when the Most High sent the lion spirit to those false prophets who, uh, Ahab, I think it was, Ahab, it was, Ahab. It was King Ahab, mm -hmm. that he wanted to listen to instead of, you know, he always had bad things to say about the Most High. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. is that those same uh, 400 prophets that uh, Jezebel had used too? You think those are the same prophets? I, I, think, I think we're talking about the same prophets. We'll get into it later. Maybe. I just wanted to see. But putting on my kid head, I was like, I, I would be confused hearing, you know, the most high sending a evil spirit to right. right. You know? Yeah. So the next one is Deuteronomy 13. 
Deuteronomy 13. Deuteronomy 13, chapter, I mean, verses 1 through 4. And that's a good chapter. The whole chapter is good. The whole chapter is good. All right. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 13, starting at verses 1. It says, is everybody there? It says, if there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth you a sign or a wonder, and the, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto you, saying, Let us go after other mighty ones, and let that you have not known, and let us serve them. You shall not hearken unto the words of that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams. For Yahuwah your Elohim proveth you mm -hmm. to know whether you love Yahuwah your Elohim with all your heart and with all your soul. You shall walk after Yahuwah your Elohim and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice, his voice. And ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. So when he says, and obey his voice, that means there's going to be other voices out there, huh? Yep. That's going to be telling you to do the opposite. Mm -hmm. Telling you to do something totally different. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So we're going to get into uh, rest. rest. Uh, we're going to get rest. Because um, rest is rude shit. You know what I mean? So we're just going to bring that out. So uh, understanding rest. Okay, uh, it's H4496, uh, resting place, rest, rest quiet. So, the reason I got Psalms 23 right there um, is because when you um, break down the definition of rest, you all you got to do is read Psalms 23. Okay. So, it says, um, the pictograph uh, noon is a picture of a C representing continuance. The uh, ket, is that right? Ket. Ket. Yeah. Ket is a picture of a wall that separates the inside from the outside. Combine these mean continue outside. The shepherd would guide his flock to a place of water. Here's water for drinking as well as green grass for pasture. Once the flock arrives, uh, they are free to rest after a long journey, a guided journey to a place of rest, a side rest. So, let's go to Psalms 23. Let's go to Psalms 23. And everybody say hallelujah when they do. Hallelujah. 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 So, starting at verse 1. And just remembering the definition, the sick shepherd will guide his flock to the place of water. So it says, Yah is my shepherd, I shall not want. He, he maketh me lie down in green pastures, and leadeth me by the still water. That's, that's breaking the definition down right there. He restored my soul and leading me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Uh, it says, uh, Yea, though I walk through the valley of death, Shall, uh, I, I will fear no evil, and you, for you are with me, and your rod and your staff they comfort me. Uh, you prepare a table for uh, me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house, the house of God. In that, in that, in that uh, house where his throne is. Mm -hmm. Forever. That's what we're trying to do with that. Mm -hmm. So, when we're looking at um, Psalms 23, and we, so basically, my point of bringing it out was Psalms 23 is the definition of rest. Mm -hmm. So now you may be like, what type of, you know, how's that rulership? Mm -hmm. Look at King Solomon. Did he ever have to fight a war? Okay. You in their land. Okay. So he never fought a war. Nothing. He ain't like uh, he pretty much 
he had to be stopped with that. He had nothing to occupy him like that, you know. But he was able to rest and rule. Right. You know what I mean? And what? It said uh, how rich we were how, uh, as a people. And yeah. it's just, man, it was, it was beautiful. But this is what we're trying to turn back to. So, let's go to uh, the word rest. And I got this slide from Mo. The word rest in the Hebraic mindset. It says, why would Israel need to rest? We are in, we are people known for captivity. Let's go to Jeremiah 2. Israel a slave? Is he a born slave? Why is he spoiled? Mm -hmm. That's why. Yeah. That's why we need rest. Mm -hmm. We always in captivity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we are considered the sheep. Okay. The sheep. The lost sheep. Uh, it says rest would have been considered salvation, prosperity, rulership, no enemies to worry about, them receiving their promises. That's what that's literally the kingdom. Joshua twenty one. Uh, yeah, Joshua, let's go to Joshua twenty one. But that's really good example. But so that, that's what we're trying to receive in the, in the kingdom of heaven. We're trying to receive rest from our soul. So, 41, starting at 41, Jeremiah 21, verse starting verse 41. All the cities of the Levites uh, within the possession of the children of Israel were 40 and 8 cities with their suburbs. These cities were every one with their suburbs round about them. Uh, thus were all these cities. And Yah gave unto Israel all the land which he sware to give unto their fathers, and they possessed it and dwelt therein. Mm -hmm. And Yah gave them rest mm -hmm. round about, according to all that he sware unto their fathers. And there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. Mm -hmm. And Yah delivered all their enemies into their hand. Right mm -hmm. there. There filled not there fell not out of any good thing which Yahuwah has spoken unto the house of Israel. All came to pass. All came to pass. And uh, the last one is, because we started this one. Okay, First Kings chapter 8. Okay. Pers the perspective that we're trying to keep, we're just trying to show that rest in the Hebraic mindset meant rulership. Because we're going, we're going, we still on the ruach, but we're just trying to show y'all that rest means rulership in okay. the Hebraic thought. Okay, so uh, 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 56. Everybody there? Hallelujah. It says, Blessed be Yah that had given rest unto his people Israel according to all that he promised mm -hmm. there have not failed one of all his good promises which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. let's go as Yah as Yah is Ruach the only Ruach that can rest upon me mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we just seen how Yah's Ruach rested upon all those people it was even in the Torah where Yah's Ruach rested upon them to build the was it the tabernacle? The tabernacle. Mm -hmm. He did yeah, man built all so that. Aaron's garden. So Aaron's garden. All these things, the Ruach resting upon people mm -hmm. to, to prophesy, to heal, to do all these things. 
but is that the only ruach that can rest upon a man? No. no. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. Oh, okay. Talked about earlier the scripture quote that the unclean spirit goes out to the seeking rest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seeking rules. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. right. Most definitely. Yeah. What is that? That's Matthew 12, right? Yep. Yep. So we're about to read. Okay. So Ephesians. Ephesians. Yeah. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6. Okay, Ephesians ch chapter 6, verses 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness in, of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Hallelujah. So I'm yeah. telling you right there, there's other spirits out here other than the spirit of God. Of course, they all. So I got dominion, but, you know. Right. So let's go to Matthew 12 and let's see. Let's see what Carter was talking about. Let's see what he's talking about. Huh? Matthew 12. We got one more, just one more slide after this. Matthew 12. Okay, 1243. Okay. Oh, yeah, I got it. When the start at verses 43, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Then he said, I will return a tool. He said, My house. From which I came out. That sound like that sound possessive, don't it? That sound real possessive. It says, okay. It says, and when he has come, he findeth the empty, swept, and garnished. Mm -hmm. Then goeth he, and taketh with him seven other spirits more mm -hmm. wicked than himself, mm -hmm. and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. Yeah. Even so shall it be with this wicked generation. So when we look at it, it says, I will return to my house where I came out. Yeah. So he was there before. Right. But now when he it said when he comes, he finds the empty swept the guards. Why? Because he was delivered. Better. From whatever was living there, he delivered. Yeah. And so he go, he wanna come back right. and chillax. Mm -hmm. But he gonna bring, he gonna, he gonna, they gonna make a house party. You know what I mean? He gonna bring everybody. Yeah. You just said, let me return to my house. Sounds possessive. Yeah. Right? Possession. In Genesis, God told Cain that sin was just a pool open. Yeah. That's it. Crouch is at the door. Yeah. That's it. That's it. It's not inside yet. It's mm -hmm. not inside yet. So now we go to now let's see real quick these spirits that can get cast out of man. Let's see what spirits. Let's see, um, let's try to use this as an example. We're gonna go to Galatians 5. Hallelujah. We're gonna go to Galatians 5 real fast. And we're gonna try to make this uh try to tie this in and make this as simple like this should be something that we should be able to read back to uh, our family members who are not in his way or if they coming to you talking to you and asking you about man I'm dealing with this I'm dealing with that you can let them know mm -hmm. what spirit there is and how to overcome these things okay mm -hmm. remember uh, 
when the, when the Ruach rests upon you, <coughs> it's supposed to lead you, guide you into all truth. Mm -hmm. So it's your shepherd. Mm -hmm. So when something else is upon you, yeah. ask your shepherd. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, go ahead. So it says, in Galatians 5 and 19, it says, now the work the works of the flesh are made are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, mm -hmm. witchcraft, hatred, uh, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, reveling, and such like. So it's more. Yep. <laughs> of, of the which I tell you before. I have also told you in time past that they which do do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Elohim. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's make this example real quick. Mm -hmm. So let's say this person is dealing with envy. They're dealing with envy, and they delivered of their spirit. So they delivered of the spirit of envy. That that spirit of envy is now out. In dry places seeking a place to rest. So when he comes back, how does he come back? How do we understand that that spirit came back? What what would play out like physically? They would be in the again. It's a thought. Okay, okay. It's a thought. That's how demons play. That's how they. That's. It's not always Hollywood. How, you, how we try to make it right, seem, right. you know, it's this monster. That just, I mean, yeah, how it manifests, that's how it manifests, but for the most part, it's a thought. Mm -hmm. That thought of envy start to play back, start to come back, and you like, not right. the dog. Yep, yeah. you like, hmm. But when you cast that thought away, you like, nah, I just, right, I was right. just delivered of that. Because it's going to come back. Mm -hmm. I was just delivered of that. Mm -mm. I rebuked it and named me, I showed him my shit, yeah, get out of here. Mm -hmm. Okay, now he like, all right. He clean. He ain't playing. Yeah. So let me go get these other spirits. Mm -hmm. Let me go get jealousy. Yeah. Let me go get uh 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 what's some other ones? Let's see. Let's go get uncleanness. Let's go get uh fornication and idolatry, witchcraft. Let's go get that spirit witchcraft. Yeah. Let's go get hatred. Let's go get all these spirits and let's come back. We finna we finna flood him. Yeah. And now something happened, an event happened in your life because it's spiritual. A spiritual event happened in your life. Now you wonder, you way worse than what you was before you got yeah, delivered, right. because you let them all back in. Now you back envying, you back jealous, you back all these things. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So this is just an example of how these things play out. Okay. Anybody got anything they want to add to that? Brought me back to what I was sharing with y'all on the day of atonement. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was telling y'all how, like, you know, praying for everybody and then, you know, praying for myself last week. Yeah. But you know, what it showed me in my dreams was like all these spirits, you know what I'm saying, that I had on me, how they was like, how they look, mm -hmm. how they like circling yeah. around me. And I seen, you know, spirit of laziness, the spirit of aggression, mm -hmm. hatred, you know, even other things that I didn't even know that I had in me, you know, that really made sense to that. But like, I ain't never came across them. I might have. May not just remember, but it's definitely true. When they said like it's more, it is more because yeah. you know, spirit of laziness wasn't mentioned off in that. You know what I mean? But yeah. it's a spirit because why we're supposed to be working, right? Right. You know what I mean? So if, you, if you're not working or uh, walking according to the calling, then you can only do your transgression. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. You're going against the most high, what he commanded you to do. Yeah. That's what, yeah. that. And so if somebody asks you, um, how is that a spirit? And so are the works of the flesh spirits? Is that a, is those, are those spiritual things, the works of the flesh? Everything that everything happens in the spiritual realm first mm -hmm. and then manifests in the physical. Mm -hmm. We don't see everything that's happening around us. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they start in the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. exactly, exactly what she said. It said, the, uh, it says, now the works of the flesh are, are manifest. manifest. Mm -hmm. So they are manifest. Back to Ephesians 6 and 12, we press them out of the flesh and blood. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm telling you, these are things of the flesh. You've already told us, you know, the flesh will against flesh and blood. Right. Mm -hmm. It's things spiritual. Right.
some spirit is going to lead you. Mm -hmm. You need to decide which one right. it's going to be. It's set apart. Mm -hmm. Or one of the other ones that are out there. Mm -hmm. You might be like, uh, you might be looking at witchcraft or somebody just threw that in there. Like, where did that come from? But <coughs> rebellion. Mm -hmm. That's a witchcraft. So, just had to bring that out. But rebellion is as a witchcraft. So, you're rebelling, participating in witchcraft. But, um, the uh, last slide, I'm close it out. So, discerning of Ruach. So now that you see that God is not the only spirit that can be out here, how do you discern? How do you discern whether it's the spirit of Yah or it's some other spirit? Yeah. Was it first judge? Mm -hmm. Let's see how anybody, no, anybody want to throw it out there and go ahead and shoot? Test the spirit. Out the spirit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Anybody else? So, everybody there? So, did you already answer? What? Never mind. Everybody there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, it's, uh, so, starting at verse 1, it says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, spirit, but try the spirit whether they are from Elohim. Mm. It says, uh, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Yeah. <laughs> We just seen earlier with the Most High allowed that to happen. Yep, that yeah. They still out here. Ain't never, ain't come back. Yeah. So uh, hereby ye know that the spirit of Elohim. Uh, know ye the spirit of Elohim. So know the spirit of Elohim. Every spirit that confesses uh, Yahshua Hamashiach is uh, come in the flesh of Elohim. And every spirit that confesses not Yahshua Hamashiach. Is come in the flesh is not of Elohim. So, did he say every man that come and confesseth, or what did he say? Mm -hmm. Every spirit. spirit. Every spirit. Got a that man is being laid by mm -hmm. spirit. Yep. It says, and this is that spirit of Antichrist, mm -hmm. whereof you have heard that it should come. And even now, already it is in the world. It's already here. Um, and it says, Ye are of Elohim, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They uh, are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world hear it. We are of Elohim. Uh, he knoweth. Uh, he that knoweth Elohim heareth us. Mm -hmm. He is. He that is not of Elohim heareth not mm -hmm. us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So we got discernment. Mm -hmm. Dang, that's discernment right there. You know the spirit of truth and you know the spirit of error. Dang. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so let's go to uh, John fourteen. John 14 verse 16 okay so it says uh, and I will and I will pray the father and he that shall comfort you uh, give you comfort give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. So, just this verse real quick. So, who is um, uh, the rod of Yah? Who is the rod? <laughs> Shia. That's the rod. So we read the Psalms 23. It said, Thy rod and thy staff shall comfort me. Yeah. So he was giving them comfort, but he said right here, 
and he shall give you another comforter. Because Mashiach got to ascend. He got to go. I got to go. Yeah. But he's going to send you another comforter. Right. Even the spirit of truth. Yeah. Whom the world cannot receive. Mm -hmm. Whom the, uh, the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. It can't discern. It says, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So you gotta have discernment. Yeah. So, and as it's telling you, right, everybody don't see it or understand it. Right. Just like we read in first John. They don't hear you because they don't have the spirit of Elohim. Yeah. They don't care what you're talking about. So let's go to Ezekiel 44. Psalms 23 and stay on that. Just mm -hmm. along with that. That's my shot. Just tying it in. Alright, so uh, okay. Ezekiel 44, verse 23. And it says, And they shall uh, teach my people the difference between the holy and the profane, and cause them to discern between the clean and the unclean. So Clean and the unclean. Clean, what? Unclean, evil spirit. Unclean spirit. So we have to discern. We have to discern. Uh, let's, let's go to Malachi 3. Malachi 3. These, just like I said, just y'all take these and go over there and understand how to discern the Ruach. Yeah. Okay, it says, start at uh, Malachi 3, start at verse 17. It says, And they shall be mine, saith Yahuwah Elohekah, or Yahuwah of a host. Oh, yeah, that's how I hope. Okay, it says, in that day when I make up my jewels and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him, then shall he return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth Elohim and him that serveth him not. Discernment. Discernment. His righteous law. Hebrews chapter 5. I'll close it out with this. And starting at verse 12. Everybody say hallelujah when there. It says, For when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye ha have need. That one teach you again, which be the first principle of the oracles of Elohim, and are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full age, <coughs> even those who, who by reason of us, have their senses exercised to what? Discern both good and evil. So this is why uh, Elder Rogue was saying earlier, we got to drink the milk up. 
we gotta start drinking milk up, especially in this time, because because yeah, we ain't gonna have any books no more too long. Yeah, you know, it's like in you. Yep. It no. says uh, in verse twelve. It says, "For indeed, although by this time you ought to be teachers, mm -hmm. by this time you ought to be teaching." Not saying that, every, but like, not saying everybody being a teacher, but just you should be able. If somebody comes to ask you a question, yeah. the scripture says, "Study to answer." Mm -hmm. You got to answer people, which means what? You got to teach them. Right. You got to teach them. It says, "Although by this time you ought to be teachers." You need someone to teach you again the first elements of the words of Elohim. Mm -hmm. And you have become such as need milk and not solid food. Yeah. We, a lot of times, um, and there's nothing wrong at all with it. It is, that's what we're supposed to do. You're supposed to seek the Hebrew. You're supposed to seek prophecies. You're supposed to be seeking uh, and being aware of the times. But when you start taking all that and focusing on that, but you're not focusing on the milk, yeah. what's some things that's milk? Why why do we keep this act? Yeah. Why? You see what I'm saying? If we don't know why we keep this habit, but we are here telling everybody to keep the Sabbath. Uh, yeah, that's right. What's the you know, what's uh, the point? But we are going about a flat earth or not. We'll argue about flat yeah. earth. We'll argue about the things. Oh, is it a do is it a dome above us? Is it okay? But yeah. but you still struggling with anger. Yeah. So worry about the the milk. How it says to love your brother yeah. as yourself. The milk. I was gonna say too, coming into a knowledge of Yahuwah's character and Yahushua's character through reading His Word, mm -hmm. because there are gonna come people who call who are gonna. Pr pr uh, present themselves as leaders or present themselves as salvation, messiahs. Yep. And even operating in, in administrations of gifts, mm -hmm. they're going to come in power. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just like uh, Jonas and Jambres turned the the, uh, the, yeah, snake, the staff mm -hmm. into a snake, they were able to do that. Right. And there's going to be people that come able to do those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. right. And if you don't, if you're not able to discern and recognize the word of Yah right. in a person, you will be fooled mm -hmm. because of the power in which they come. Okay. But Moshe snake was able to consume the other snakes because the word of Yah is more powerful than any two inch sword. The word of Yah is what's true. That's the spirit of truth and, and there's no error in his spirit. Okay. And so if you don't see the fruit of the Ruach, you know, patience, long suffering, if you don't see that in a person, but they're moving in gifts and power. Yeah. You have to question what spirit mm -hmm. that is because you know from reading the word mm -hmm. that the word says that these gifts would be represented, um, these um, these attributes of patience, long-suffering, meekness, that these things would be represented by the Ruach in this person's life. Yeah. So if you, don't know, if you don't know that in the word, you won't have the ability to discern that that power doesn't mean that the Ruach is, is present. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. 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 And you had all the points. You told them to me this morning. Uh, being able to discern. Discern, okay. There you go. Came back to me. Think about it. Moshe, yeah. you know what I mean? And uh, the magicians in the, of Egypt. Mm -hmm. They they had powers too. Remember when we went back over Matthew 7? Yeah. Because uh, you put all of it was in there. The righteousness. Torah. Torah. So, uh, we used this example this morning. <laughs> I said, um, discernment. If we go down to pay, pay side, and Ro come in there, and he got a bottle of 1800 proof, some Hennessy, mm -hmm. and some vodka, and he like, all right, come on, y'all, let's, let's, let's get some drinks. Let's. You have to be able to discern either he tripping or something's off with him because if you be like, well, since the elder doing it, we can do it too. Right. So let's go ahead. And, because that means that's what who he's talking. That's what he's talking about. You need you you need to get off the milk. When you don't have milk, you don't have discernment. Yeah. I mean, when you don't have meat, you don't have discernment. When you you got to get off of those things. You got to understand the word more, and that way when you receive the ruach, you can receive that discernment. Mm -hmm. 
the spirit, because that was one of the administrations, discerning of spirits. So I would be able to look at Ro and be like, I don't know, something off with Ro. I don't think I should do that. I don't think we should be doing that. Why? Because in Deuteronomy 13, did he not say he would raise up prophets and dream of dreams? Mm -hmm. If a person come in here and say, man, um, that whole field over there about to catch on fire, so let's worship Buddha. And it catch on fire, so let's worship book. Are you gonna do it? Yeah. You gotta be able to discern some everybody say no. But somebody gonna be like, oh man, man that whole field caught on fire. I'm just saying, I mean it's it's on fire right now. Like, so you gotta have that discernment. You gotta have that discernment. I don't remember everything I said to you. That's why. That's why God's always say that's good always problems. What happens when you strike the subject? Yeah. What happens to the sheep? Yeah. You have to be able to be to work yourself into that position where you can lead yourself. That's it. Or you can be led by the most That's it. That's it. Think about that truth. I mean, it, it's gonna run back to Torah. <laughs> it's gonna run back to Torah. Not that we trying to keep it to you know what I mean. Cause it's spiritual. So the things of it, like he just said, I'm telling you, I'm going to be amazed if that field catch on fire. But y'all remember Deuteronomy 13? Mm -hmm. When I bring up a prophet, a dream of dreams, right. and it come true? Mm -hmm. So back to Torah. Was was he being ruled by Torah? Because he said, let's chase out the Buddha. Mm -hmm. He said, if he make you chase out the other Elohim, kill him. Yeah. Yeah. Then you go down a little further, it says, the people that are closest to, to you. you. Yes. Yeah. Your brother, your sister, your mother, your father. <coughs> So, within the Mishpaka, like he said, if I come in here and say, let's turn up, mm -hmm. y'all should discern, because I ain't never did it before. Pray that I never do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but if really, I'm all, something it's all about me. And if we not looking, you you know what I mean? Yeah. If it's going away, sometimes we be around bruised. And they going like this. And we all going this way and you just, you, you know what I mean? And you gave me a good analogy because when we talked to the other architects, <coughs> the architect, he, had oh, an, yeah. he talked to us about uh, marijuana. And he was like, um, man, what was, what was he saying? Uh, it ain't in Torah. It ain't in Torah. You can't find it in Torah where it say don't smoke reefers. You know what I mean? And he was saying, you don't find it in Torah that it don't say drink bleach. <laughs> Literally, you know. But what you can see in Torah, I don't think it's ever a portion of Torah where it says smoke anything. Smoke I don't think I've ever seen it. Yeah. Birds. You're supposed to eat herbs. Yep. Um, just, it, I mean, and sometimes it's just such, so minuscule. Yeah. It's minuscule difference, differences, but I guarantee you they're not going to line up with Torah. Yeah. Um, they are not going to line up. A good example. Had a sister come to me. And she was upset because I had written that piece about burning sage and doing these things that seem good, mm -hmm. seem earthy, seem holistic, mm -hmm. but they're not recommended for us, mm -hmm. right? So she was angry with me, and she came and she was telling me about how I was wrong, et cetera, et cetera. And then she referenced um, a scripture out of one of the apocryphal books. She tells me about how the angel told um, the man to Cook fish guts. Tobias. Yeah, oh, yeah. Tobias. Yeah, Tobias. Tobias. And I said, well, where's the precept for that in Torah? Mm. Where's the precept for cooking fish guts in Torah? Where's that in Tanakh? Because if you can't show me that in Torah or Tanakh, then we can't talk about that as being a feasible idea for us to do. Mm -hmm. Right? But you have to know what's in Torah. Right. And you have to know what's in Tanakh. Mm -hmm. And so people will come to you with ideas that sound good yeah. because it seems healthy, right. seems like an okay thing to do. Mm -hmm. But actually, when we do that kind of thing, like burning sage and stuff, we're actually marking ourselves for another <coughs> Elohim. Mm -hmm. Because our Elohim gave us a prescribed scent mm -hmm. that he wants, that he responds to. And so it's a small thing, seems like a small thing, burning sage. Seems like a small thing, but the practice of it is connected to the worship of other elements. And so that person is telling you, oh, cleanse your house. It's a good, and, and medicinally, you look it up, it'll say, sage cleanses your house from, uh, it's antibiotic. Mm -hmm. 
right? Mm. But the, the truth is, is the intention is to worship another Elohim mm. with it. And so if you don't know that your Elohim gave you a specific scent that's supposed to be burned in the temple, and then he said, and don't burn that in your home. Yeah. Mm. Then you understand, okay, that's not something I'm supposed to do. Exactly. That's an example of a soul. <laughs> but it can bring it to your life. And, I, and before you know it, you be practicing witchcraft. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I believe uh, Mashiach, didn't he say, uh, what did he say? Uh, make sure that light that's in you is not out of darkness. Mm -hmm. So you can yes. think that you're doing something. Because it says, what it says, uh, what did Shao say? So, all things are lawful. So when we know that, we like, okay. When you do your research on Sage, you'll see, man, it's in almost every witchcraft book that you can find. Every book that you can find spells how to conjure up spell, it's in there. I can promise you. Sage is going to be that number one thing that's going to be in there. So when people say that, they say that type of stuff, you know. You just gotta discern. Okay, he ain't got the rock elohim. She ain't got the rock elohim. You talking about doing it? You may not know. They may not know, but they have not sought it out. They just doing it. That's that's just a person who just likes to just do things. You can discern. Okay, I can see kind of how you operate. You see what I mean? You gotta say something. No, just um, if anybody is kicking around the idea of marijuana. Right on the door, I can tell you that it will hinder your prayer life and it will mess up your whole walk. Tell me about it. Just because something, it might not necessarily 100% be proven sin, it can cause you to sin. Yes, so don't even, don't, don't mess with it. It's all the best, man. And they read it earlier. You have to set apart the things that are set apart from the things that are perverse. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. The 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 yes. And then at the basis of it, what's the intention of you smoking weed? Mm -hmm. what, what is your goal? What is your thought process? I'm smoking this for what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's because I want to feel good. I want to relax. I want to laugh. I want to rest. All the things that come with it. How is that pleasing to you? You want it to right. reign yeah. over you. Yeah. That's why yeah. being sober minded. Exactly. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What if you come down and we're not sober? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Somebody high. Yeah. yeah. Stuck. I always yeah, say, stuck. Yeah, stuck. You're supposed to be sober. Oh, yeah, that's going to be great. That'd be a horrible situation. So when you discern and look at those things, look and see if they got anything that's profane, anything that's against tour is not of the most high school. Sorry, I also wanted to say, um, when you're looking at the discernment of the things that are to come, um, it's a good reference to look at uh, the people who came with the staffs and emulated yeah. what Moses was doing. Mm -hmm. They had the power to emulate it and bring it forth, but they had no power no. to cast it away. They had no power to bring you deliverance yeah. from the things right. that Yahoo, the plagues that were sent for. Exactly. So I can bring it and I can match you, mm -hmm. but I have no power to save you from it. Mm -hmm. And so be mindful of the people that you that you see they do these wonderful works and these things, but are they leading you to deliverance? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be delivered from that thing? Mm -hmm. Or are they just smashing you, showing you something wonderful that you can't attain? Exactly. Right. Okay, that's good. Did we talk about it uh, last week when we talked about Because I believe you, might, you had asked us. So I was, you had asked the question. And I believe my answer was it was about in the church, how they're able to do things. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. In the church. But then we look at here, and it's like, but y'all not in truth. But how can y'all... Eh, we was like, when Yah gives out gifts, when he's creating us, and I said, we got to look at us as, instead of always looking, look at it in the spiritual sense. When he was creating us, he all gave us individually gifts and things that we were going to do in the earth, things that we were going to one day carry out. That's the purpose. You know what I mean? He gave all of us things. And so he'll give people gifts. Now, it's up to that person when they understand that they have a gift to walk out Yah's way or mm -hmm. to corrupt that gift. Because yeah. you can corrupt that gift. Yeah. You can, what is it in, um, where that, it was a it was a young woman, a young lady, who was, she was a soothsayer. And had two, pro it was two, two people mm -hmm. who were over her who basically were yeah. making money off of her soothsayer. Yeah. 
that was a gift that she had, but it was corrupted. I'm not saying Sue said it is a gift. I'm not saying it like that. It was a prophecy. A yeah. prophecy. And it was perverted. Exactly. And it got perverted. And when Paul cast that demon out the girl, they weren't able to make no more money. So you got to understand that Yah sets everything up for a reason. If it's evil in the city, he did it. If it's a false prophet over, he did it. If there's this man over here healing, he healed 8,000 people, but he's sleeping with everybody in the church and he he got all he got all this money, he taking all this money. Yah set him up there. Yah put him there. We can't we got to really think about that. So I mean, uh, Samuel, that, that uh, the witch that brought Samuel back. I mean, yes. that's powerful. Oh, yes. To see somebody bring a, a familiar, it's, it's not really him, but the, that was powerful to see somebody that you know them died mm -hmm. and they bring that image back, you and you're like, oh, they got some power. Mm -hmm. But in Torah, when you see somebody bringing some dead back, we're not talking about healing and they come alive, we're just talking about their ruach right. come, come back. back. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when we understand, we, so when we see that the, the set apart spirit, when we understand the set apart spirit, what is spiritual? The law is spiritual. So anything pertaining to Torah, that's how we able to discern. The spirit, the what it says, the law is spiritual. The law is truth. The law is love, the law is life, the law is everything. Wow. Life and death. What do you say? Choose you, life and death. Yeah. The when you see everything yeah. according to Yah's spirit is life. Yeah. And then you understand yeah. that the opposite spirit is death. Sir, the see. Elohim and the living. Yeah, he the Elohim and the living. Uh, the other thing you talked about uh gifts are called without repentance. Mm -hmm. They call without uh, repentance. A lot of people that they give you a gift. And they, exactly. they, you know, and yeah, he don't take it back. He I was thinking about Tupac. Tupac, um, Tupac would have been a moray. Yeah. Tell him. Would have been a moray. Like, mm -hmm. at a profit. Yes. You know. Yes. But that gift was corrupted. Yes. Corrupted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And y'all don't take gifts back just because he gave it to you, and he like, oh, you ain't walking in that, so I'm gonna take. Nah, he gonna let you do your thing. Yeah. So, does anybody else have anything to? No. Yeah. Just laying back. Right. When uh, it's when it goes back and talks about put on the whole arm of Yah. Mm -hmm. That's you know what I mean. After he say we wrestle not against flesh and mm blood. -hmm. Mm -hmm. So no, just because you in this truth, you're not going to be tried. You know, Deuteronomy 13, yes. Yah is going to try you to to ensure you love Him with all your heart, your mind, and your affection. Mm -hmm. yeah. So therefore. You know what I mean? Don't think just because you in truth, these things ain't coming back on you. Because once the house is clean, they're coming back looking sick. Right. Mm -hmm. If they can rest again, mm -hmm. rule your life. Don't play with them. It's spiritual. As soon as they don't hit your mind, it's Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So the question is, when we go close out, I mean, you got something? Uh, just real quick. What you said, choose you to the life of death. You have to have lived toward you, have to have written Torah as well. Yah said, choose you to the life of death. Speaking of the written book, mm -hmm. the written Torah, Barabbas was a what? He was a murderer at the mm -hmm. death. And he said, Who do y'all want? Yeshua or Barabbas? Who did you chose? Yeah. death. We have yeah. a tendency mm -hmm. to keep choosing death. Let's talk about it. That's good. That's it. I, I, I bring, bring, bring that out. I talked about that too. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to make those choices, <coughs> those choices that don't have life in them. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. But we are in a pattern of doing it, so we keep doing it. Who can save us from ourselves? Yeah. Yeah. Yahuwah, through the Ruach Hakodesh, is the only one that can save us from our own bad choices. Yeah. He teaches us how to choose right, wisely. Yeah. Hallelujah. One more thing I'm gonna add is kind of a sidebar. The article that I had uh, just read not so long ago that was talking about uh, trauma being able to be passed down through the DNA. Yeah. And we know who we are. Thank y'all. And we know that, like you said earlier, we've been a people who've been oppressed over and over and over again. So we carrying this trauma through our DNA, and we're not knowing why we're reacting or acting like this. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, uh, for the remedy in which we have now is to call upon the Ruach Hakadosh. 
one simple thing that you can start to do that I'm learning is just meditate. But really focus on your breathing. Because when you breathe, it's a way that you can release the traumas throughout your body. So sometimes we have pains and all types of stuff. We don't realize it, but that's not natural. You shouldn't feel like this. You shouldn't be sick, you know what I'm saying? If we supposed to be people that's going to be healing, how can we heal people when we're sick? You know what I'm saying? So I just want everybody to really focus on the simple and it's how to really try to uh, cleanse yourself. Not just spiritually, but physically as well. And see how much more you can do for the people. Yeah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the question would be, the closing question would be, what spirit is ruling you? Hallelujah. What spirit is resting up on you? You got to self-examination. Really examine what spirit is truly ruling you? Yep. Seven days. Seven days. Seven days. Seven days. Seven days. So, so, purification. I mean, this purification, that's, that's something to meditate on. You know? Yeah. Most definitely. What spirit is ruling you? That's, that's, that's all for today. Hallelujah. 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 I brought up a good point, man. That trauma that's in our DNA, you are absolutely right. It's time to put on new garments, y'all. It's time to put on new garments. Uh